Hi everyone. In this video, we'll discuss what are harmonic loads, how do they affect an assembly, and how to solve for their response in ANSYS Mechanica. Let's go. Every system has dynamic characteristics, which determine how the system responds when it's subjected to dynamic loads. These characteristics are called as natural frequencies. Natural frequencies of a system are the frequencies at which the system vibrates with increasing amplitude. This phenomenon is called as resonance, and it's typically considered as a dynamic instability in the structure. Therefore, when a system is subjected to cyclic loads, such as winds, waves, and other mechanical vibrations that most machinery experience, it's important to study how the system behaves at various frequencies, especially those that are close to its natural frequencies. The harmonic response analysis determines the steady state response of a structure that is subjected to loads that vary sinusoidally over time. The transient vibrations that occur at the beginning of the excitation are not accounted for in a harmonic analysis. This enables us to verify whether the designs will successfully overcome resonance, fatigue, and other harmful effects of force vibrations. A typical harmonic analysis will calculate the response of the structure to cyclic loads over a frequency range and obtain a graph of a response quantity, typically a displacement component versus frequency. The peak responses are then identified from the frequency response and stresses are then reviewed at those peak frequencies. In ANSYS Mechanical, there are two ways of solving the harmonic response, full harmonic and mode superposition methods. These methods assume that the system is linear and ignore any non-linearities such as plasticity or contact non-linearities. In the mode superposition method, a linear combination of mode shapes is used to determine the displacement vector of the structure. Using this technique, the solver determines the response of the structure over a range of frequencies. Since the overall response is dependent on the modes that are being considered, it's important to include modes over a range such that no prominent modes are left out of the range. As the outcome of the harmonic analysis, three results are expected. Frequency response, phase response, and contour plots. Frequency response provides the value of the quantity over a range of frequencies. Typically, the deformation is plotted over the frequency range to identify frequency with most deformation. Phase response provides the lag between input and output responses. Contour plots provide distribution of stresses, strains, etc. at a given frequency, which is typically the frequency with the peak amplitude identified in frequency response plot. Note that when the system is excited at natural frequency, it can undergo resonance and therefore it can vibrate with an amplitude tending to infinite. To cap the response to a finite number, it's important to introduce a small amount of damping in the system. This makes the system's response more realistic. It's also interesting to note that, damp that damping introduces lag between system's excitation and its response. Now let's go ahead and see how mode superposition analysis is done in ANSYS Mechanic. In this example, we'll use a model with three prongs with different dimensions and profiles so their natural frequencies are not close to each other. This part is fixed at the base and we apply a harmonic pressure load of 10 MPa on the three prongs to excite the system. The goal is to identify the frequency of load at which its peak amplitude and the stress developed in it at this definition. Insert Modal Analysis Drag and drop harmonic analysis over solution of the modal analysis. Notice the connection between the two systems. Materials, mesh and other model properties are shared between the two systems. In addition to that, the solution from modal is used as setup for harmonic analysis. This is because the mode shapes and frequencies are used in harmonic analysis using mode superposition. 
attach the geometry under model analysis and open MECAM. Before we proceed further, change the units to metric system. For this demo, we'll use the default material assignment, which is structural steel. Now let's define some mesh controls to get a reasonable mesh for the analysis. Insert a method under mesh and change it to multi-zone. This method will attempt to divide the geometry into multiple zones and mesh them. It's useful for geometries that have multiple domains that can be meshed separately. Next, insert body sizing under mesh and set element size to 0.5 mm. Now select the base space and define a fixed support. Go to Analysis Settings and set Maximum Modes to Fine to 50. Now we are ready to solve the model. Once the solution is done, click on Solution so we can inspect the modes extract. We can see that the 15 modes are spread over a range of 7700 Hz to 115000 Hz. We can see that the first five modes are within a smaller range of 7700 to 15000 Hz and the next mode occurs at a frequency much higher. Right click on the mode frequency table, create mode shape results and evaluate all results. From the mode shapes, we can see that within this range, all the bending modes of all three prongs in C direction are captured, which is the direction of excitation we are intending to apply. Based on these observations in this demo, let's focus on the frequency range of 6000 to 20,000 Hertz and see how the system responds to harmonic loads within this range. Since the sixth mode is at a much higher frequency, we may ignore its contribution in this range. Now, let's proceed to setting up harmonic analysis. Under harmonic analysis, insert pressure load, select the three phases, and set magnitude to 10 megapascals. The pressure is assumed to be the harmonic load, so this is an alternating force. If there are multiple harmonic loads exciting the system, then one can define a phase angle to introduce the lag between. In this demo, we only use one load, so we can leave it as is. Next, under analysis settings, set the range minimum to 6000 Hz and range maximum to 20,000 Hz. Set the solution intervals to 50 so we can capture the frequency response with reasonable resolution. Under damping controls, set the damping ratio to 0 0.02 or 2%. Insert frequency response deformation, select the body and change the orientation to z-axis which is the direction of excitation. Now, solve the model. Once the solution is done, click on frequency response to inspect the solution. We can see that three peaks appear closer to the mode frequencies, but we may want to have more resolution around them to accurately capture the peak. Let's go to Analysis Settings and change cluster results to Yes and set cluster number to 10 for higher resolution in that region.
Now solve the modeling. Let's check out the frequency response definition. We can see the results are clustering around the natural frequencies, and we are able to obtain better resolution of results for the peak responses. Under frequency response, expand results, and we can see the frequency at which peak deformation occurs. Notice that the system experiences most deformation when it is excited at a frequency near the fore point. Now right-click on the frequency response object and insert create contour results. Evaluate the results. This creates a directional deformation about z-axis at the frequency and sweeping phase of interest. We can see that while the center prong undergoes large deformation, the other two prongs deform too. Now, Insert equivalent stress and set frequency to the peak frequency and sweeping phase same as the directional deformation plot. Evaluate results and we can see where the most stress is developed. So based on the design criteria, one may wish to add fillets or more material in this region to bring the stresses within a preferred range. This completes the demo. Now let's summarize what we learned in this video. Harmonic analysis predicts the steady state dynamic response of a structure under harmonic loads. It's a linear analysis. Therefore, all nonlinearities are ignored. Mode superposition is computationally efficient in performing such an analysis. The excitation forces and the response of the system are all at same frequency but there may be a lag between them. It's recommended to add at least a small damping in the system so that system responses at resonance do not tend to infinity. I hope that you have found this video useful. If you like this video, then please like, share and comment. Also, do subscribe to this channel to receive updates and visit answers.com courses to discover more useful courses.